Welcome to my channel Chemistry Not Mystery. You can also visit to my website chemistrynotmystery.com. Today's topic is photoelectric effect. Watch this video till the end to learn all about photoelectric effect. And to understand what is threshold frequency, what is a work function, and to understand the effect of intensity of light on photoelectric effect and effect of frequency of light on photoelectric effect. Photoelectric it is formed by two different words, photo and electric. Photo means light and electric stands for electricity. So the overall meaning of photoelectric is generation of electricity by light. Isn't it interesting? Of course it is. This amazing experiment was first performed by Hertz. Hertz performed this experiment when first group metals like potassium, rubidium, cesium were exposed to a beam of light. Electrons were ejected. As you can see in this animation, these ejected electrons formed an electric current so that their presence was detected by the emitter. An emitter is a device to measure electric current in a circuit. These ejected electrons were counted by a detector that measures their kinetic energy. Hertz listed down his observations of photoelectric effect experiment. There is no time lag between the striking beam of light and the ejected electrons. That means electrons are ejected as the light beam strikes the surface of matter. The number of electrons ejected is directly proportional to the intensity of light. For each matter, there is a minimum frequency below which Photoelectric effect is not observed. This minimum frequency is called threshold frequency and it is represented by nu naught. These ejected electrons come out with some kinetic energy and their kinetic energy increases with the increase in the frequency of light beam. He was able to properly explain the photoelectric effect by using Planck's quantum theory. According to Planck's quantum theory, energy is not continuous. It consists of small packets or quantum of energies. If you are not familiar with the word quantum and Planck's quantum theory, you can watch my previous video. I have given its link in the description box. Hertz considered the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. He used the word photon that referred to a particle having one quantum of energy. So photon and quantum both are the same. When a photon strikes on an electron, it transfers its energy during the collision and some of the energy is used to eject the electron and the rest of its energy is transferred to the electron in the form of kinetic energy. As you can observe in the animation, when a photon strikes a metal surface, it ejects an electron and the ejected electron moves with some kinetic energy. If you observe carefully, you will notice that the ejected electrons move faster in case of blue radiation as compared to that of red radiation. Because the frequency of blue radiation is higher than that of red one, so does the energy. And that's why the blue photon left with more energy after removing an electron and this extra energy transferred to the ejected electron. As we know that the energy is directly proportional to the frequency. The energy of photon is given by h nu and the energy used to eject an electron is h nu naught. It is also called work function and the rest of the energy is transferred to the ejected electron in the form of kinetic energy. So the law of conservation of energy applies here too. So we get an equation h nu is equal to h nu naught plus half mv square. Let's try to understand work function h nu naught. It is the minimum energy required to eject an electron. Every metal has a specific value of work function. Nu naught is called threshold frequency, below which the photoelectric effect is not observed. That means, if you use a radiation 
having lesser frequency than the threshold frequency. Its photon won't have the enough energy to eject an electron. A photon must have energy equal to or more than that of work function. And extra energy is transferred to the electron in the form of kinetic energy. Energy of photon minus work function is equal to kinetic energy. So by using this equation, we can calculate the kinetic energy of an ejected electron. Kinetic energy is the residual energy that is transferred to the ejected electron. And kinetic energy depends on the difference in the energy of photon and the work function of the metal. So greater the difference, the more will be the kinetic energy. Does frequency of incident light have any effect on photoelectric effect? Let's see. On increasing the frequency of light, the energy of photon increases. So does the difference between the energy of photon and work function. It results in an increase in kinetic energy of ejected electron. You might argue that why high energy photons do not result in an increase in number of ejected electrons. If it has enough energy, why don't it eject more than one electron? It is so because here we are considering the particle nature of light. And when a particle or photon collides with an electron, because of the impact of collision, that electron get displaced but not the other one. What happen if we decrease the frequency of incident light? On decreasing the frequency of light, the energy of photon will decrease too. And if the photon does not have enough energy or equal energy to the work function, it won't be able to eject an electron from that metal. And no photoelectric effect will be observed in that case. How does the intensity of incident light affect the photoelectric effect? Intensity is defined by the number of photons. So on increasing the intensity of light, number of photons also increases. And now more photons will strike on the metal surface and more electrons will get ejected. I hope now you understand what is photoelectric effect. But even if you have any doubt, you can post in the comment box. And don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching.